Welcome to the conversation around the second chapter of Embracing Exile, You Are God's People. In this chapter, I, I wanted us to think about something that may be a new thought, maybe even kind of a radical thought for us. In our culture, we have tended to think as Christians that the primary work of God is to rescue individuals. Um, sometimes we've thought God's primary purpose is to save individuals, meaning uh, we, he wants to get particular people into eternity. In this chapter, I, I wanted us to wrestle with this idea that, that God really, from the beginning, has not just been redeeming individuals, but he's been forming a unique people, a people in the Old Testament called Israel, a people in the New Testament that we call his church, that God has always been about redeeming a people, forming a unique nation, a unique group of folks who would be a reflection of his life in the world that would learn his ways and the new testament would be filled with his spirit in ways that would reflect uh, the kingdom of god the the nature of who god is into the world a, a formation of a people and so i had fun uh, playing around with the the genesis text with you um, there are three words that i love in that opening chapter of the bible separation filling and blessing and we looked at how in the first three days, uh, there are all forms of separation, separation of light and dark, separation of sea and sky, separation of the dry land. And then we get three days of filling. Uh, what God formed on day one, he separated light and dark, he filled with the sun, moon, and stars. What he separated on day two, the, the sea and the sky, he fills on day five with birds and fish. What he separated on day three, the dry land, he fills on day six with, with animals and humankind. And then Day seven, this blessing of creation, separation, filling, and blessing. And I had us think about how that theme is not just there in creation, but it's, it's even the way that Israel thinks about recreation. So that when in chapter 12, God calls Abraham to begin this covenant relationship with him, it follows that same kind of pattern. Abraham, separate yourself out. Uh, separate yourself from your places of, of provision and protection. Separate yourself out. And I will fill you with my presence. I'll be with you so that this, so that you can be a blessing to the nation. Separation, filling, blessing. Separation, filling, and blessing. One of the things that I think will be true for us as we begin to embrace exile is we'll begin to realize the uniqueness of this people called the body of Christ, the church in the world, and that we'll discover that we are not just persons following Jesus, but we are a people who are being formed to be the body of Christ. As Paul would say, a body where the ear can't say the eye, well, I don't need you, or the hand can't say the foot, I don't have any need of you, but where we're connected together, embodying the life and the mission of Christ in the world as his people. I, I want us to rediscover that. I think that means some real challenges for us, and, and one of the big challenges is it will mean that we have to reimagine what church is. Um, my sense is that for many of us, church is a place that we go, um, oftentimes the church is thought of as sort of a place that individuals in their walk with Christ come to get the help that they need to continue their walk with Jesus. And in some sense, the church is that. We are a place that helps people uh, discover the intimacy of their life with Christ. But I'm also fearful that in our culture then, as I say in the chapter, the church has become a kind of Walmart for Jesus, if you will, selling the goods of Jesus uh, to individual consumers and not being the body of Christ together. And so, so I'd love for us to rediscover what it means for the church not to just be a place that we go, but for the church to be something that by God's grace we are becoming in the world. I, I wish I could sit in on your conversation. I would love for you to think about these key terms. What does it mean for us to be a people who are separate? Uh, what does it mean for us to be separated out we're called to be in the world, but not be of the world. So we can't just go all live in the desert together, but there are ways in which we're called to be separate. And I'd love for you to think about that, talk about that. What, what does it mean to be a separate people? And what does it mean to be filled? Um, certainly the life that we're called to is not just sort of gritting our teeth and learning how to be Christian, but we're promised the power of the Holy Spirit to empower us to be what Christ is calling us to be. And so I'd love for you to think about what it means to be filled. And then also that third key word, what does it mean to be a blessing to the world? We're going to come back to that in future chapters, but, but what does it mean for us to begin to think about the people of God as a blessing to the world? Um, 
But most of all, I'd love for you to talk about what it means to reimagine the church, not just as a place that we go, but what does it mean for the church to be something that by God's grace we are becoming? How do we become the church and not just go to church? Uh, I know that this will be a fun conversation for you, and I'm excited to see the way that the Spirit of God will help us to increasingly become the church together.